Can this Yamaha be the best electric scooter under 200 bucks? I'm not sure, but this can surely be the best option for some folks, especially if you are looking for the best rock guitar under $200. But let's find out more. <laughs> You can see the structure of this video somewhere over there, helps you to jump to the section that you want to see. And if you're interested about this scooter, check the latest prices, compare the prices by clicking the links in the description. It helps me to produce more scooter content if you buy something to those links and it adds no extra cost for you. And let's jump to the overview section now. And let's take a closer look at this. There's the standard Pacifica headstock and then the nut and it's made out of material called urea i didn't have any clue what it is but i searched the world wide web and i found that the urea is a raw material used in the manufacture of many chemicals such as various plastics so i came to the conclusion that it's at least really close to plastic and it surely looks like plastic i will put the source of this information in the description if you want to check it out. Unfortunately, Yamaha is not super clear, at least with this model, that on what they use on the scooters, like this urea. Most of us don't have any clue what it is. And also, they state that the red part is either rosewood or walnut. But I'm pretty sure that this mycobeat has a rosewood red part. And as you can see, there's a contour for your picking hand and it's really, really comfortable. Best from these under $200 scooters that I have recently tested by far. It makes your picking hand positioning really comfortable. Great. And also the body wood, it's, it's confusing. Yamaha states that they use mahogany, but I think that right now all of the music stores that I have checked and gone through, they state that this scooter has an Agatis body wood. And that would make more sense because it's usually a cheaper wood, the Agatis. I'm a little bit tilted on the Agatis side. Still confusing. I, I, I didn't find a correct answer to this. It's either Magani or Agatis. But tonally, if you believe that tone wood has a great effect on your tone. These are quite on the same level with the density and should provide quite similar tone for you. And the body, it has a close finish and the neck, it has a shading finish and it's really smooth. Bridge is a little bit different than with many other coders. It doesn't have the regular block saddles on it, but for me, the usability of it both on the setup and playability are fine and when I play this scooter it makes actually playing more comfortable and easier at least for me but more about this on the playability section and here you can see some minor finish issues on the fretboard some color changes but more about these on the build and finish quality section And let's now check how the tremolo block looks, the springs look, and how many springs there are. So two springs and the tremolo overall, it's quite how I like it, not too tight. And then the tremolo block looks great, no cracks, no scratches, should be durable. And also you can see some issues with the paint job, but that's not a huge issue because it's inside of the back plate, so no big deal. Also, I measured the width of the neck from two spots, from the nut and then from the 12th fret. And also, I measured the string spacing using two different methods. The one that, that I came up with between the D and the G string. So, spacing between those two strings on the middle and also more typical style of string spacing measurement from the outer side of the low E to the outer side of the high E.
and I also measured the resistance of the each pickup with the multimeter and resistance it gives us some indications about how much output the pickup gives us and more output means other tones and usually those are better for distortion and usually those are also a little bit fuller tones. This gets quite close to square bullet strats and square roughing the strats but with the single coils of this Yamaha you get more output and the tone is overall warmer and fuller. But if you want those more original, old school type of single coil tones, those bright and spanky tones, then in my opinion the Squire, Bullet Strat and Affinity Strats are better options tonally for you. These single coils of this Yamaha are not so bright. Stratocaster looks with the Yamaha twist. I really like these looks. Yeah. And I might still prefer the original Strat looks more, especially when it comes to headstock. I'm not a huge fan of this headstock, but still, this is nice looking cooler. Close finish on the body and same finish on the neck. It, it looks good. I can be totally happy with this cooler when it comes to looks. And especially the red version of this is really stunning. And let me know in the comments. What do you think about the looks of this? Better looking than the Squire strats. I will give the looks of this scooter 4 out of 5. Then the hardware of this scooter. And this scooter has the best hardware in my opinion with the ESP LTD. is a 10. Really nice hardware for the money. Tuners, Gemma has own sealed tuners. They tune really well. I have only tuned this like maybe 2 or three times during these one and a half weeks that I have been with this coiler and I have played this quite a bit and I just took it out of the box so that sometimes the strings need to be stretched out a little but, but still really nice stays to really well at least this is my copy and overall tremolo block bridge whammy bar everything works really well Really nice artwork quality. I, I just don't have any complaints about the hardware of this scooter. 5 out of 5. And then the electronics. Of course, Gemma's budget pickups, ceramic pickups, two ceramic single coils, and then the ceramic humbucker. I didn't open the big car to see the shoulderings and that kind of stuff. It's just too much work right now for me. But still, I tested everything quite a bit, a lot, played with the switches, and dog knobs, everything works really well. Yeah, I have no complaints about the electronics of this, for this price. Again, 5 out of 5. Then on the build quality. Here we have some minor issues, overall solid, body doesn't have any issues, and the neck, back side of it, really smooth, great. And the headstock, no issues expect near the crossroad, on what they are, so you polo right now. There is some scratches and a small piece of wood also. So that's there. And then on the fretboard, we have some issues. First, there are a couple scratches, then a couple small holes. And also, this fretboard overall, it has weird looking color changes. I'm not sure if these are supposed to be there. I, I would believe that no. A little bit like this fretboard has been stored on the kind of bad environment. Yeah, I will show you some photos now where you can see that yourself. And also, I first thought that on the ninth fret, the fret inlay, that there is a small crack. But I know this is later that it's probably that color changing that the fretboard has. It is also on the fret inlay. So. Some issues with the finish on the fretboard. Nothing huge, yeah, nothing too bad, but still, some issues, yeah. And because this is a beginner coiler, I'm not too worried about this. Yeah, and if I would buy this to me and get got these issues that this coiler had, I wouldn't probably refund this. No, these don't bother me. There's some uneven frets. Third, Fourth and then the eleventh fret, a little bit lower than the rest. Yeah, but no fret bus, even though the action is quite low. Yeah, that's great. 
And then one amazing thing about this, no sharp thread edges. The best under $200 cooler with the Jackson JS20 rating on that department. So that makes playability smooth for sure. And it's nice that beginners and budget coolerists don't need to sand this cooler at all when they get this. This is amazing for this price, in my opinion. Really smooth thread board edges and the thread edges. But still, because of those some issues, I will give the build and finish quality of this cooler 3 out of 5. And then the playability. This cooler is really comfortable to play. C-shaped neck, really narrow neck also. It was 1.61, the neck width is really, really narrow, but it's a little bit thicker than, for example, the Ivanets, and a little bit thicker than I would like it to be, but still it's really smooth, comfortable. 22 medium frets with the right spot on a setup like this one has, playing is effortless and comfortable. Really great playability for beginners. Of course, if you struggle with thicker necks, this is, this is I, would, I wouldn't call this a thick neck, but it, for example, the Ibanez and the Squire Bullet Strat, those had thinner necks than this. So yeah, this is not the thinnest, but not the thickest either. But the playability is great. And when it comes to your picking hand, this control over there, it's it's the best on this price range that I have tested. For example, the Ibanez CRX 70 QA, it's not as comfortable as this one. And also the bridge is slightly different. I will show you a couple photos now than the regular type of six saddle bridge. And for me, this actually makes playing easier. This is one of the most comfortable feeling bridges too for me. It kind of anchors your hand really nicely to the bridge and it it's, makes you feel confident when you're playing and it's really comfortable when it, especially when it's paired with this counter. And of course it has counter for your belly over there too. It's kind of standard, but of course nice to have. And so this is kind of what is special about this cooler. Really nice for your picking hand. Makes picking really easy. And also one thing about the tongue knobs. These have really good grip against your fingers if you want to change the volume or the tone when playing. So that's Nice thing, I noticed that too. So, almost no issues with the playability at all. The neck is a little bit thicker than I would want and for some beginners, especially kids uh, with small hands. This is a small con. Doesn't make the playability impossible and doesn't make this good or bad choice. But especially bar records can be a little bit trickier with this neck than with the Squire Bullet Strat or the Ivanitz. CDRX 70 QA, for example. But still, the playability is really good. I would rate it 4.6 out of 5. Let's now compare this Tiro 12 to couple quite similar coolers. And first, let's compare it to Yamaha Pacifica 112J. Right now, the price difference between these in US dollars is 20 bucks. I'm right now looking at these on Sweetwater and the Tiro 12. 199 and then the 112 j is 219 so 20 bucks difference in price but what about the difference on the paper the specs one is the body wood yeah i'm still like on the side that this pacifica 012 it has a catch body many other players don't really like it personally I have not noticed any difference, at least on this price range, when I compared to other cooters and tones. Sounds good for the price, definitely. But with the 112J, you get the other body. It's it's better quality wood. And when it comes to the tone wood overall, Alder should provide a little bit crispier and brighter tones. But the difference, it's not huge, in my opinion. But Alder is a little bit better quality tone wood overall. And the Agatis. Of course, comes down to your personal preference. Which one do you like more? And then, other main difference tuners. The 112J it has the sealed die cast tuners, and this is more about the build method which is used 
to craft this tuner. And personally, with the Tiro 12, tuners worked really well for the price. So it's hard to me to imagine that the 112 chase tuners would be noticeably better. Probably a little bit better and maybe a little bit more durable. And then the pickups, same. Not with same, not the same. And the next shape, the same. And I take this spec from the Yamaha's side. The Tiro 12 has a little bit thicker tremolo arm. And this, my friend, it makes all the difference. No, no, it doesn't make any difference. But it's, it's a little bit thicker. If I would have the money for the 112J, I would go for it. You get the slightly better quality tuners, probably a better quality finish overall, at least a little bit. And then you get the other body, which is a little bit better quality tone wood than the Agatis in general. Yeah, I would go for that. But if you want to save like the 20 bucks or you just don't have the money right now and just want to get started with the Kuder, I wouldn't shy away from the Tiro 12. It's a great Bettinger Kuder. So there's not much difference. There's some. It's probably worth the extra 20 bucks. But for most players, to the my testing, these differences are not noticeable. I would imagine the, especially most Bettiners don't need these minor upgrades. But still, if you have the money for the 112J, go for it. And then this Zero 12 with the Squire Affinity Strat HSS with the same pickup configuration. And right now, I'm again looking at these products on Sweetwater. The Affinity Strat goes for 229. And then the Pacifica Zero 12, it goes for 199. Squire Affinity Strat, it's 30 bucks more expensive. And let's look closer at the specs now. With Affinity Strat, I think that you get a better tone wood for Stratocaster popular. It doesn't make a huge difference in my opinion, but I would prefer it with the strat. And then you get standard single coil strat and standard hub packing with the affinity. And I had a hard time finding if these are Alnico or Ceramic, but I believe that these are Ceramic. I'm not 100% sure, but I would assume that these are Ceramic pickups. A little bit lower quality, but uh, quite on the same level with the Pacifica 012. But the Pacifica 012, it has more warmer, fuller and flatter tones on those single coils. And also the output is higher and resistance is higher. But then the Affinity, it has kind of those more original type of strat sound, single coil sounds. More bright and more spankier. So this comes down to your own personal preference. Which one you want more? Really bright, spanky tones with Affinity or more warm and fuller tones with the Zero 12. And then the tuners, Affinity has diecast tuners. It's more about how these tuners are built, the difference is there. And maybe a little bit more durability with the diecast tuner. But I have actually, it's a funny thing, I have tested a bullet strat that has the Affinity strats tuners and it stayed tuned really well. But when I compare it to this Zero 12, there is not an noticeable difference between the tuners of these. Yeah. And then same, not with quite narrow neck, great for beginners, kids, folks with smaller hands like me. And I have played this boat and in my opinion, the Pacifica, it has slightly thicker neck, just slightly thicker neck. So you can keep that in mind, but that's just my opinion. I have not measured the thickness of the affinity strat. And then the nut, Urea vs. Synthetic Bone. For me, these are really close to plastic and the Synthetic Bone nut with the bullet strat that I had previously, it was worn out. So based on my personal experience, I would choose the Urea nut. But I think that there's not a huge difference still. And then the fretboard radius. Zero 12 gives you flatter fretboard, especially fast playing is usually easier with the more flatter fretboard and it's surely like that for me. And then chords, riffs, especially near the nut, are usually easier and smoother with a little bit more radius. So there's some difference here. But both, when it comes to fretboard radius, both have a C-shaped necks. And when it comes to thickness and the width of the neck, both of these are really playable. Great for beginners. And then the fret size, Affinity Medium Jumbo, 012 Medium. I prefer the Medium 
my favorite fret size, but medium jumbo it's really close to that, so no huge difference. And here again, not a huge difference. The price difference it's 30 bucks, but on the paper, not huge differences. Yeah, but it comes really down to your tone preference in these, and if you want the more kind of an original looking strat with the squire. Do you want the warmer and fuller single coil tones and the body shape doesn't really matter to you? Then zero well. And if you want a more original type of bright and cold and spanky single coil tones and want that iconic fender look onto your strat, then I would go with the affinity strat. Yeah. And maybe if you had the money for square affinity strat, I would probably go for it. But with the Pacifica 012, there's nothing the same about it. Now it's time for some sound samples with this scooter. I recorded samples with the Boss Canada 50, clean, grunts and metal tones, distorted tones. So let's check these out.
really versatile cooler. One of the most versatile on this price range, and that always makes it a great option for beginners. Especially if you are a kid or teen, your music taste and what you want to play with your cooler, it can change a lot, at least it did for me. So that's why versatile cooters are really great for you. You are not stuck inside one genre. And this bridge humbucker, really close to Squire bullet strats and affinity strats. It can handle some metal, yeah, distorted tones, hard rock, rock. Really versatile bridge pickup. Great. Also, the pickup positions where you can play with the one coil of the bridge humbucker and the middle single coil sounds really good. One of the best toast tones on this price range. And also the tones with the both single coils on. Those two sound really good. And then the middle and the next single coils, they are quite a bit warmer and not so bright than with, for example, the square bullet strat and affinity strats. And these also offer higher output too, and are not as spanky and bright than with those prior strats. So you can keep that in mind if you like those more kind of really bright and spanky single coil tones, then affinity strat or bullet strat might be a better option for you tonally. But still really versatile, but not as good with the blues and funk than those squires strats. But with many other cranners, I think that this is the best rock cooler under 200 bucks. Really very style. And you can visit also some softer genres, cleaner genres, and also metal with this cooler. Really great tones. I really enjoyed those. But of course, if you mostly want to play metal, but still want a lot of versatility, then I would go with the Ibanez CRX 70 QA. And if you want a metal cooler, then I would go with the Jackson CS2020. I have videos about those both on my channel and reviews too on my website, coolersnextdoor.com. But as rock cooler, and you can visit other genres too with this, like many genres, really versatile. This is really the axe to have under $200. I would rate the songs 4.8 out of 5. I really enjoyed playing this. Then the value for the money. This gives you amazing value for money, in my opinion. Best tuners with the ESPL, DDC10, and I Jackson had pretty same level of quality on the tuners too. So stay tuned. Well, at least this might copy it. And then everything other hardware really great. Electronics work well as they should. Then good tones and comfortable playability. But then some issues with the finish, mainly on the fretboard. But probably if you buy this cooler, you don't have any issues with its quality. It's maybe just this my copy. But still, that takes some out of this value for money. And but still, I would rate the value for money quite high, 4.9 out of 5. Then the verdict. I kind of went through a lot on the value for money section, but let's take a look at the some pros and cons of this cooler. Pros definitely, versatile, great sounding, great rock tones, then stays tuned really well, overall hardware quality is great, and then the comfortable playability and no sharp fret edges. That's great with this cooler. And then this bridge, at least for me, it's really comfortable, your hands just anchored on this one, and also this condo, really great. So those are the main pros with this cooler. Also this shading neck, it's really smooth. Then some cons. If you like bright single coil tones and spanky single coil tones, these are maybe not the best option for you. I would go with the Squire Affinity Strat or the Bullet Strat 10. And also not the best metal cooler on this price range. Yeah, no. And then you might face some minor finish issues. I face it those on the fretboard, as I mentioned earlier. But other than that, it's hard to find any other cons from this cooler. And yes, maybe this headstock. At least for me, it's a small con. It's not the best looking. I would personally want that the Yamaha would change the look of the headstock. 
but it's no game breaker, deal breaker for me. And the overall score for this one, I would rate it for 0.3 out of 5. So it breaks the tie with the Ibanez GRX 70QA. Mainly it feels like a more expensive recorder because the neck is so comfortable and there is no sharp fret edits at all. Yeah. So you can call this the best electric cooler under $200 with type and CRX 70 QA, at least for me. And then who is this X4? Well, if you want to play rock music, want the versatility, want the comfortable and smooth feeling neck, at least this might be had that, and want that your cooler stays in tune really well. One of the best tuners, at least in this micropy. And need a whammy bar and value really nice contours on the front and on the back. So if that sounds good to you, then great option. Great option for beginners and also if you want some kind of a project cooler that you want to play with and then maybe hit it with some old braids, maybe pickups, maybe the nut, stuff like that. This you can this feels like a more expensive cooler and you can make it sound like a lot more expensive cooler if you want. So that start to sum this video up. Really nice cooler. I had really fun time playing this and reviewing things and looking really close at this. Personally, I think that this is a great option, especially if you want to play rock and want also visit a lot of other genres too once in a while, but the rock music is your main thing. If you're interested about this, check the latest prices and compare some prices by clicking the links in the description. It helps me to produce more cooler content, especially if you buy something through those links and it adds absolutely no extra cost for you. And subscribe for more. I will compare this to the Ibanez CRX 70 QA soon and also to Yamaha Pacifica 112V, which is kind of a big brother of this one. So those videos are coming soon. Subscribe for those and stay safe. And hopefully I will see you again soon.